What's going on, G1 Nation? Tom the Iron Man here, checking in from Texas, Lewinsville specifically, for the first installment of what I like to call a Texavlog, chronicling my vacation time down here in the Lone Star State for the Texas shindig down in Austin. So, uh, going into this little trip this year, there was a lot of uncertainty going on. SGC is not going to be coming back with the way things are being run with Rooster Teeth's involvement with Screw Attack and with the brand split with Game Attack. You know, there was a lot of uncertainty, so I honestly don't know what to expect going into this weekend. So as time goes on, we will go ahead and discuss everything on a day-to-day -day basis. But just getting here now, taking all the politics out of it, it is extremely liberating and wonderful to be back here in the Lone Star State. Uh, I just underscores how much I need to get away from Virginia and everything and all my responsibilities and all that fun stuff. I love my cats to death and I wish I could take them with me, but I needed to get away and this is what it is. So, dearest brother Anthony, please be taking care of the Panther family while I'm gone. So, it really all started, and I'm recording this right now at... Uh, 11.58 p.m., which would be 12.58 back at home. So this has been a full day and a half. Um, it really all started uh, yesterday, uh, Monday, uh, as soon as I got out from work. Um, everybody knows on Twitter, hashtag Dr. Tuesday. Well, that wasn't going to happen this week because I'm in Texas right now. How can you possibly be doing Dr. Tuesday when you're out of town? Well, simple thing is you go and knock out as much as you possibly could the day before. So that's what I did. As soon as I punched out for work, I immediately flew down the road and got my allergy shot, saw the dermatologist, the podiatrist and, and all that other fun stuff. Got that knocked out immediately drove back home and then, uh, tidied up, uh, fed, watered the cats, cleaned their cat boxes out. So everything would be ready for dearest brother, Anthony to go ahead and take care of them while I was gone. And then became the slow, painful, procrastinating progress of packing. It shouldn't be that hard. And for some reason it always is for me, whether it be going down uh, to Texas for SGC or even driving just an hour and a half away for MAGFest. Packing for me, for some reason, is like pulling teeth. I don't know what it is. I know where everything is. I know what I need. I know where to put it. I just, for some reason, just can't get my ass in gear until it's the 11th hour. And boy, oh boy, did it really come down to that this year. I got home at like 5.30, and I really wasn't done until midnight. So that's like six and a half hours that I basically putzed around and didn't do everything that I needed to do as nearly as fast as I should have, which is really upsetting because I could have used the sleep. Um, had to do a quick load of laundry to make sure I had enough shirts and pants to go ahead and last the weekend, not to mention under britches and socks and all that fun stuff. So uh, as soon as I got that knocked out, um, you know, th th then it was easy going. I knew technologically speaking, like the cameras, I'm bringing two cameras. Where's my 3DS laptop, external hard drive, all that stuff. I knew where that was. That was easy going. It was just packing all the clothes. I don't know what it is. It's just a painful process for me. And I didn't get done with any of that stuff until midnight, which is bad because my flight is at 620. With a flight at 6.20, it's best practice to go ahead and show up to the airport two hours early. And I'm not an early riser, so that really means I have to give myself one hour's lead time on getting up for anything that's by appointment. And I wasn't going to be able to drive there because I didn't have a ride. So I wasn't going to go and pay the outrageous parking fees. So I had to go and hire a taxi. And the taxi... When I called those guys up, I said, I need a reservation. And they said, okay, sir, uh, when do you need that for? I said, I need it at 4 a.m. for Tuesday. July 4th, Tuesday morning, sir? Early morning? Yes, yes. They were really confused to hear that. So that means I went to bed at midnight-ish and then got up after what I would say probably the shallowest nap I've had in recent memory. 
at 3 o'clock, really more like 3.15, threw myself in the shower, did a terrible job shaving, uh, and went ahead, packed all that stuff up, and proceeded to go ahead and just haul ass and carry all my bags outside. And that here's the funny thing. I didn't even weigh them. More on that in a second. Go outside, find the Washington Flyer Taxi, which is a taxi service that was specifically designed for the greater D.C. metro area of bringing people that are strictly going to and from the Washington Dulles International Airport. That's all they do. They don't go anywhere else, but from there and back again. So that's it. So I go there and it's a Prius V. Okay, I guess. And the guy is in a fully reclined position in the car and the windows are down. And I'm like, okay, it's like four o'clock in the morning. I get it. Guy's probably not happy that he's, you know, here, but whatever I am. So I go and knock on the window and the guy lurches forward. Like, you know, he was probably out cold. So that was a thing. Sorry, buddy. I didn't get your name. But uh, sorry to have woken you from your deep, deep slumber, but I had a plane to catch. So um, he was clearly not with it. Um, He didn't notice that one of the bags that I had had a missing handle and he kept reaching for it and it kept fumbling. So I had to help him with that. So I still tipped him, but you know, that's... It was funny to see him struggling with uh, something like that. You know, probably shouldn't be taking any time to nap who knows how long he was out there before he turned the meter on so anyways got there got the bags uh went to the terminal to go ahead and check in 60 dollars a bag jesus christ that's ridiculous i wish flying southwest wasn't so expensive because those bags would have been free but they don't as of late and i don't know if it's just bad luck or what I love flying Southwest, but their price and the time of day just hasn't been meshing with what I need. When I fly to Texas, I want to get there early as I can, preferably before noon, so that way I can actually enjoy the day when I arrive. I don't want the whole first day of my vacation just being written off as a travel day. So I get there, check the bags in, and that's when I realized I hadn't weighed them at home. So I have eight days worth of clothes, toiletries, medicine, my uh, Amiibo, my camera equipment, two tripods, and uh, a couple of extra controllers in one bag. And then in another bag, I have my Wii U fight stick, my 360 fight stick, my Xbox One fight stick, inflatable mattress, sleeping bag, That bag ended up being 38 pounds, well under the weight limit, and the first bag was 50 pounds exactly. Oh my god, my heart almost stopped. Because even if it was one pound over, the price that you have to pay for that is just ridiculous. So I lucked out big time there. Uh, Never do that, kids. I mean, I back when I was making a pretty good dollar, um, back in 2010, coming back from... Uh, no, actually it was 2000. No, no, it was, no, it was 2010 coming back from SGC. I had loaded my suitcase with so many retro games from visiting the, uh, game attack booth and the local game exchange stores. I had pushed it well over 60 pounds and I was making so much money back then that it didn't even really matter. But I miss those days, and those days are long gone. So paying overages for weighty bags is not a thing that can happen. So I'm going to have to remember to be careful should I acquire some fancy new things to make sure I shift it over to the second bag with the air mattress. So I uh, got in there, checked in, went down to security. The place was almost damn near deserted. I got in and out there in 10 minutes. I'm still kind of annoyed that you still have to take your shoes off, unless if you're like under 12, Um, which, you know, wouldn't have been such a big deal. 
because I tied my shoes pretty loosely in the past. I could just slip them off, but I've gotten new insoles for my shoes from the podiatrist. So I really actually have to lace up my shoes now. First world problems. I know. Um, so that was kind of annoying, but I've lost so much weight since Magfest that the pants that I'm wearing right now are size 42 and they will fall off without the aid of a belt. So when you go into security, you're supposed to put your hands up behind your head in a big old X fashion, you know, like that. So that way they can do this full body scan thing. And, and I almost dropped trow in front of the TSA. So that was funny. Um, so uh, big, big, big win there. But at the same time, super almost embarrassing there. So I go ahead, get to... Um, the uh, airline, there's a little bit of time. I go and take a snooze, uh, wait, uh, wake up, get on the plane, and then we're off in the air to O'Hare. Had one of the softest touchdown landings uh, going from Dulles Airport to O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Um, that was pretty fantastic. It was, we were only in the air for like maybe an hour and a half. It wasn't that far. So it's a 13-hour drive. And you get there in an hour and a half by plane. Pretty pretty great. I'd say that's a good turn. Um, probably going about 600 miles per hour at that point. Because, you know, if you're going... If it's uh, if I'm able to get there in 13 hours going 70 miles per hour, that's probably got to be going almost 10 times that to go ahead and actually get there in that time. I'm sure somebody can figure out the math, but I'm not going to do that here. Because it's past midnight back home and I'm tired, damn it. So, um, there was a bit of a layover in, uh, Chicago gate was B12. And that's when I remembered that I forgot to pack my goddamn vitamins, vitamin B12, baby. So my gummy vitamins, I had left them all on the dresser. So that was number one priority to go ahead and get those. Once I got on the ground in Texas, um, it was damn cold in O'Hare airport. I don't know what was going on. If I wasn't wearing my screw attack hoodie, I would have been a freaking popsicle. So I went ahead, found myself uh, a seat in front of the sun and just sat there until it was time to board. Um, got on the plane. It was about a two and a half hour flight from uh, Illinois to uh, Dallas. Um, touchdown wasn't so soft that one but you know a flight's a flight and the seats were relatively comfortable and I was able to get a little bit of a reprieve a little bit of a nap but and I'm looking over here and I've already forgotten one of the most annoying things uh about when you travel at the airport that the TSA will not let you bring beverages past checkpoint charlie um you have to drink everything and there was a story a couple of years ago i think it was maybe even on the side scrollers news desk about a guy who downed a whole bottle of vodka in protest because he didn't want to throw it out and the guy got alcohol poisoning from doing it well you know i i've been on a huge water kick ever since i started this this weight loss regimen and you know i had to i was thirsty i needed to get something so i got the only thing that I could find, because I prefer Deer Park when I can get it, um, all that they had was uh, Smart Water, and I've never had this before. It does not taste good. They must have put something in here. But this thing is one liter for $3.08. I can go to Costco and get a 12-pack of Deer Park that's a liter and a half for $5 flat. Screw that. So I'm I'm not throwing it out because I paid for it, goddammit, and I'm going to drink it even if it tastes horrible. Um, get thrifty. Don't waste anything. So uh, get on the ground in Dallas. Go out. Uh, get my bags. Everything's intact. Clearly the camera's working. Thank goodness. Um, then we went ahead and we, me, me, I went ahead and found the rental car. Uh, it was Hertz, so that's like the third year in a row that I've had them. Uh, good times. Also had a good experience with Alamo, so those that's another one I can confidently recommend too. Um, but yeah, this is a, a hat trick for Hertz. Good for them. Um, and I was... Uh, I went cheap on the hotel room I am now. Cheap on the flight, but I wasn't going to go cheap on the rental car. Because last year... I put down for a compact 
and was hoping to get uh, something nice, and I got stuck with a Toyota Yaris that didn't have cruise control. That was a goddamn nightmare driving down to Austin. How do you not have cruise control as a standard feature in 2016? I don't understand how that happens. My freaking Chevrolet Cavalier from 2002 had that. What the hell? So uh, I asked for a uh, midsize Chevrolet Cruiser uh, similar, and that's exactly what I got. Now, unfortunately, it's not like the LTZ model cruise that I had uh, for SGC 2014. That was one of the funnest cars I have ever driven in my goddamn life. Uh, This is just the LT model. Uh, It can still move. The wheels are a little bit smaller. But it's uh, it's still a smooth ride, and I, and I highly recommend it. If you can get your hands on the LTZ, definitely get that one. That one's a performance model. It has a turbocharger. Uh, the wheels are 17 inch. They're very wide. Great grip. Um, wonderful sedan. Um, but the uh, the LT is pretty good too. Um, so and I, and here's the cool thing about the LT. I found out you can turn the traction control off. Power. So that was fun. Um, got the car and, and actually the trunk, um, for the, uh, even the LT is big enough to actually fit two full size, 28 inch suitcases. So I was actually able to comfortably fit everything in the trunk of the car without issue. So that was great. Went ahead, uh, got the car, drove out. And it, at this point it had been, let's see here, I had 530. 6.30, It's been over 12 hours since I had eaten last. Uh, and I was flipping hungry. So the first thing that I did was I plugged into the Google machine and found the closest steak and shake. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, it was the one in Lewinsville. Perfect. That's where I wanted to go anyway, because that's where this room is. This hotel room that I'm currently doing the Texa vlog in. But uh, I, I love Steak and Shake. It dates back to my brother and his cross-country adventures of visiting the extended family in Chicagoland. And I absolutely love, love Steak and Shake. It is probably my second or third favorite fast food dining experience the quality of the burgers are just fantastic because their their patties are made from ground steak, not just regular beef. That makes all the flipping difference in the world. Um, but they seem to have pared down the menu. I was surprised by this. I was looking for um, the burger that they had the fried egg on it, and they had the, the miniature single patty version, but there used to be a two patty, and it seems to be off the menu. Liz, if you're watching this, uh, down at, out of Crystal Lake uh, in Illinois. Let me know if they've done that because, or maybe it's just the ones in Texas, but I went for the old backup. I went for the jalapeno crunch steak burger, which has uh, sliced jalapenos, two patties, a pepper jack, a chipotle mayo sauce, and uh, deep fried French fried onions. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. And I normally get a pita butter milkshake or the Nutella milkshake, but they had a new one on the menu that I desperately wanted to try. And it was uh, raspberry chocolate chip, and that was diabetically delicious. So that was wonderful. Waft that down all too quickly. That's the problem with good food. It never seems to last because you're just so hungry. You just destroy the whole thing. It was, I I tweeted on uh, Twitter that I I inhaled it like Kirby and I was flipping hungry and I ate it up and it was just wonderful. And the young lady got a nice tip for me because she, she brought me right over to the bar and the food was there was within, within minutes, minutes. And it was peak lunchtime craziness. So that was cool. Uh, and by that time it was getting around 1 32 o'clock and uh, normally when you do a hotel room check-in check-in isn't usually till 3 p.m and i figured what the hell i'm in the neighborhood let's go check it out and sure enough my room was available already so they let me in uh and then the nap monster came and and we had a fight a fight in this very bed and he bested me he put me in a sleeper hold and i passed out for three hours woke up uh around 5 30 6 o'clock something in that neighborhood 
uh, to Shelby saying that she was home from work and wanted to know uh, if we wanted to hang out on the fourth. And I said, you bet your damn ass I do. So went over there, picked her up. And we were like playing the game of where do you want to eat dinner? Where do you want to eat dinner? And uh, we had a couple of good ideas. Um, there was a barbecue place in downtown Lewinsville. Unfortunately, it was all blocked off because of the fireworks display that was going to be going on later that evening. So we went there. Then we were going to go try some Vietnamese pho. I've never had that before. So I was one of those. Do you want to try it? And I was like... Okay, you know, it was just one of those things that, what, whatever, you know, uh, I'm sure I'll try it again someday. It was just not, you know, you go, how do you go from getting Texas barbecue to Vietnamese soup? No transitional material here, folks. And when we pulled up to that place, that place was closed. Something that I'm not used to. You know, in Virginia, it's been the only holiday that anybody ever really seems to be closed for is Christmas. So to see some businesses actually closed for the 4th of July is incredibly refreshing to me and shows the sanctity of some of these holidays, whether they be federal or not, that they should be observed. Damn it. So that was, uh, that was crazy. And then we were going to go, uh, Tex-Mex go to fuzzies and there we were passing a pizzeria. I think it was called Mauricio. Uh, and, and she said, do you want pizza? I'm like, fuck yeah. Just went over there and just dived right in. And they had a six inch pizza, had six slices, and it was wonderful. And we were making Conjun Gino jokes the entire time. Gino, touch this pizza. What is this? What is it? Is it I guess, I guess so. Hey, hey Gino, touch this placard. <laughs> It was, it was great. Um, and, uh, had, uh, dinner and that's when I caught back up to me that I still hadn't gotten my vitamins. Well, you know, never leave a job half done. So got those and, uh, was over at a CVS, uh, that wasn't terribly far away from where the pizzeria was. Got that. And as we were pulling outside, we were able to see off in the distance and still hear them quite audibly well. Not one, but two fireworks displays. And she and I just sat there and just soaked it in, man. That's magical right there. Because last year, uh, SGC uh, ended on July 3rd, and I drove Shelby back up to her place on the 4th. And I was feeling a little bummed because I really like the fanfare that is Independence Day and the 4th of July and all the fireworks that come along with it. And I was really kind of bummed that I wasn't going to be able to see any. And as I was driving across the bridge, uh, across um, uh, the lake, and that's when they all started going off. All the fireworks displays from all the towns nearby started going off. And I had a fireworks display to look at for three and a half hours, all the way back from Lewinsville to Austin didn't miss a thing and it was a magical experience and it was kind of cool to have that again completely unplanned completely by surprise and just boom there it is fireworks it was a very nice moment that she and i got to share together like that so that was that was wicked awesome so and uh went back to her place dropped off because she does have work in the morning um, new job, not enough PTO, totally know how that goes. You got to do what you got to do. Um, and then after that, I realized, well, if she's driving down on Wednesday evening to be there for roll call on Thursday morning, our traditional run of going to get con supplies wasn't going to happen. So I figured I may as well try to knock as much of that out as I possibly could. And then I realized I'm still in the neighborhood I should probably go visit the old HQs and much to my total surprise after almost five years, 
the original Screw Attack HQ, somebody has finally moved into it, and it's like a signage company. Totally flabbergasted, because uh, that lot had remained vacant since they had moved out. I've visited it every year since SGC started back up just to pay tribute. And the back lot where the ba uh, box bot wars a clip of the week was filmed, uh, that has now been leveled. They actually have uh, building two brick buildings of some kind in its place. So, uh, that was I was like, oh man, you know that's a piece of site history. Now it's gone. Um, and the uh, creepy um, preschool um, area is turned into like a storage bin. Um, where uh, Jared and um, Adam filmed Dale and Chip's Rescue Retail, the last episode with the, the cloud wall wallpaper background. Um, it was all like a storage room filled up with like painting supplies and stuff like that. So, you know, times ever changing. And uh, then I was like, well, we're not that far away. Let's go visit the second HQ uh, slash the Game Attack retail store and see what that is. And that has been turned into a massage parlor. Again, totally surprised because that lot had remained vacant since they had moved out. Um, so that was from like late 2013, early 2014. So that those lots had remained vacant for quite a while. Um, I guess I should consider myself lucky that I got to go back and not see the inside. I never got a chance to do that. But to actually go ahead and visit those lots and remember it, this was a part of, you know, site history. Um, and that I'm able to still go to that area, almost a hollowed ground, if you will, um, and just, you know, soak it in, you know, saying I'm standing where they stood. And uh, then immediately went next door to the cartoon-sized Walmart Supercenter and did some uh, convention preparation shopping, got my Slim Fast shakes, which have been a part of my uh, weight loss uh, plan that I've been on for a while, and uh, some bottled water, and eight handles of Gatorade, and some Nature's Valley granola bars, uh, peanut butter, uh, dark chocolate, and cherry chocolate chunk. Uh, those are wonderful, but you know, this is the thing. This is when I, I remember that I'm not in Virginia anymore, that I'm in the South, the deep South. Um, you know, that you can't get deer park water over here. It's all Ozark. And I remember Ozark water going all the way back to the managers conferences back when I was with GameStop, that was the water that they were handing out to everybody. Uh, to, you know, keep all of us store managers hydrated and with it while we were going from training room to training room. So um, I think that's what Deer Park's doing down here because it's the same exact sipper bottle. Um, I, I don't know if they just, you know, like bought out the Ozark brand down here. And since it's a more recognizable brand, that's what they're using down here. I, I don't know. Uh, it's But that's what I have and I'm ready to go. And I'm also ready to go to bed because it's been a full day. And even though I've gotten a nap in, I've got some stuff I need to take care of tomorrow. Some people I need to see and uh, get all that taken care of, um, make some phone calls and get ready for the drive down to Austin on a Thursday morning. So all day Wednesday is going to be jam packed full of driving hither and thither to and fro. So anyways, that will do it for now. This has been the first text of log of many to follow and we'll go and check in with you next time. So on that note, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.